For the 300th time, hello, Christine. Hello. Uh, welcome, everybody, to And That's Why We Drink. If this is your first episode, you're um, 300 weeks behind. <laughs> um, but welcome. As you can see, we are not in our usual spots. For example, we're together. Yeah. Um, we are, you want to tell them? We're in a carriage house. Whose carriage house? Sarah Winchester. Dun, dun, dun. We, uh, so we decided for our 300th, we should really go out with a bang. Something special. Something spooky ooky. And uh, if you recall, our very first episode, all the way back in 2017, uh, we, I covered the Winchester Mystery House, so our very first location ever. It, it felt fitting to... So I just flew across the country and met Em and Eva here. We got a lovely tour. We got like the a private tour from the person who runs their TikTok, by the way. So if you've been getting plagued with videos like we have of the Winchester House on All TikTok, all the trends. We got to meet them in the flesh. It's very lovely. We got like a over two hour tour. It felt like it we was saw every room. Very special. I went into the basement first. We went into the basement. That was a first for me to go first into anywhere. Well, I've been to the Winchester House um, two other times i think so this is now my third time uh how how was it for you because i if i didn't get the the, the, the same first, magical aha like you got tonight. i was just enamored i mean i was just enamored i just love i love all of it i love the wallpaper that she had some glitzy glam wallpaper um you know the story behind it is all a little bit sad but Christine almost cried a few times. Just a little bit. For good reason. For <laughs> yeah. good reason. They, uh, Just a little bit. But And we got to hear some like inside stuff. But I mean, uh, by the way, one of the reasons that I know I said when we decided to come here, it's because the first episode we ever did, we recorded um, an episode on the Winchester House. But also for 100 episodes ago, for our 200th, we decided oh, that yeah. I was going to redo it. Um, oh, so this is now like a tradition, the third time. This is like our third time now, 300 episodes. I don't episodes. know how we're going to top this for 400 and 500 because Apparently. we're already inside it. Like there's not really much more we can do. Everyone tag the Winchester Mystery House TikTok account and let them know that in another 100 episodes we need to come back here and really <laughs> blow everyone out of the water. Um, but no, so uh, we decided that we were going to come here, get a tour, have some fun. We're going to tell you about it. And because Eva and Christine hadn't been before, I was in charge of the camera. So we're going to try to either insert some clips of the tour yeah, or we, put it on we Patreon. Did a, we or... did a walkthrough for Patreon. So the, the walkthrough um, is going to be on Patreon. So you can go check that out if you would like to see the video footage of us discovering everything for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, and also getting scared by the Halloween decorations that jumped at us. Yes. Uh, that was uh, unfortunately very real and very frightening. It was it was a blast for me, especially yeah, you had because a great time. I was behind. I was no one else. I, I just got to watch everyone else get scared. You watched it happen. So yeah, but so we did the walkthrough. We have some uh, clips and stuff from that. And uh, basically, I think what we're gonna do is um, Em and I prepared separately as always. But Em's gonna cover some of uh, our ghosty equipment here, mm -hmm. and then I have some stories to bring up the rear. But also, we figured you know since we're here on the property and we have recording equipment, you know if you're listening to this and you hear any spooky evps were you know there mm -hmm. shouldn't be anyone else talking so if you hear anything <laughs> let us, us know as you know? far as we know yeah um yeah so before anyone freaks out we're not covering the winchester house this episode we're just here yeah um, we just <laughs> we've already done two episodes on it oh, yeah um but uh yeah we we've got some ghost hunting equipment and i have seen a lot of people in the last few years ask me if one day i would explain some of the equipment and i thought what a better there's no better perfect time better perfect there's no perfect time other than to do it at a haunted house so. exactly and then i have some some uh, like real life examples and some fun surprises for m too so ah, okay so uh oh before we start happy 300th reunited honestly and it feels so good with lemon he's looking great he's more busted than ever <laughs> he's literally white now it's, i didn't even know he could turn a new just color aging gracefully <sighs> and i wish you would stop shaming him for his looks he looks like a rock on a like a he looks like you pulled him out of concrete you know what <laughs> it's really bad if you're watching the youtube version of this by the way you can tell what's the sword that you pull out of the stone Excalibur or something? Yeah. The sword on the stone? Sort, he, sort of the Please same. don't refer to him as sort Excalibur. Of the same, sort of the same <laughs> vibe, I would say. I would argue. 
and sure, I will, as I will if argue he, in that he is a complete lore and uh, probably very confusing to a lot of people in terms of science how he has survived he's this a long. little bit calcified he's done something's happening Fossil? He's, he's harder than he used to be yeah. when he was already as hard as a rock anyway lemon's here to <laughs> join the party <laughs> to listen in on some of these uh uh, wonderful little ghosty Spooky equipment gadgets. things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, also, I would like to say right before we get into it, there is um, other things we will get to talk about in the very near future that includes these ghosty equipment. Mm. Uh, we out by the time this comes out, we only have um, shows left in Austin, Texas, and then after that, we don't have any more here for the booze shows, and oh we can finally gosh. tell you the secrets if you have yet to come what this whole tour has been about. So if you would like us a, uh, a teaser, a spoiler, something like that, maybe refer to the theme of this episode. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Christine, I, would you like to pick something for me to oh. teach you how to use, teach the audience how to use? Okay. Um, what, what do you got? What, what do you have I on your list? I got a little bit of everything. You I do. got motion detectors. I got thermal imagers. I got your favorite ding dong. I love the ding dong. Would you like to start there? Yes. Let's start with the ding dong. I would love to start there. Also, in honor of our very uh, our 300th episode, I wrote out the notes by hand like I did in the first episode. So. And we still have those first notes, by the way. We do. If anyone's wondering. Okay, so the ding dong. And by the way, this is probably a more YouTube heavy episode because people are Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we we are filming this in case, but um also, you know, it works as an audio episode too. We'll explain to the best of our ability for those who are just listening in. But the Ding Dong is actually not called the Ding Dong. This is something Christine has named. Would you like to hold it? Yep, his name's the Ding Dong, Mr. Ding Dong. He is it's a motion detector which by the way, $5 at Target. So, um just starting out hot, you don't have to be you know, bad and bougie when it comes to getting all the bells and whistles for ghost hunting, you can get a $5 motion detector uh, at Target. And the reason Christine calls it a ding dong is because it literally sounds like a ding dong. A ding dong. You walk into the store, into the strip mall. Ding dong. It's, pr it's exactly the same one. But it's a ghost. All that matters is it's a motion detector and it's actually pretty good. Um, as someone who's used this before when I was ghost hunting, um, it's uh, got a really wide range. A lot of people use it as a trigger object or they will use it as a yes or no um, instrument. So you can just put it in an area, step away from its range so you're not the one setting it off. And if anything walks by, any shadow, will it'll pick up. So um, I've used it in the past. It is very, very good at its job. It's effective. Very Simple effective. but effective. And Christine calls it the ding dong. I love it. What's this guy now? This guy I know Christine knows. This I is, love him. This is a spirit box. I've got a lot of things to say about a spirit box if we're trying to be educational about it. I'm not going to get super scientific about radio frequencies and things like that because I think Thank some God. people will fall asleep. <laughs> including me. <laughs> including Christine. And she has fallen asleep on the show before. So I'll do it again. <laughs> Don't tempt me. Okay. So this is called, well, I'll take the little speaker out first for people watching. It's just this tiny little black brick here. And this is the Spirit Box 7. Looks like a little mini walkie-talkie if you're a... Uh, yeah, like a little, like a, a scientific man. pager or something. something. Yeah. And uh, fun fact, I learned that ours is, has a blue black light to it, which means, uh, or a blue back light, which means that it's the older version. They don't make this anymore. Oh. They make ones with red back lights. We've got a relic on our hands. <laughs> yeah. And it's An not just lemon. So uh, what a Spirit Box does is you have a... you put a little speaker or headphones or something like that into the port and uh, you turn on the power and basically what it does is it sweeps through radio frequencies because in theory, uh, spirits uh, try to communicate with us but it's just at a frequency that we can't hear with our own human ear. And mm -hmm. so by letting spirits manipulate the radio frequencies around us, we can actually hear them in real time if we let this scan through um, in, a, in like a sweep, if you will. So. Right. There's, if you watch Ghost Adventures, it's the thing that goes like, psh, 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 like scanning through. Exactly. Yeah. It's very obnoxious. So annoying. But one of the cool things about it is that uh, you can uh, hear voices in real time. So Yeah, you can like have a conversation, basically. Yeah, we've talked about um, EVPs a lot where you'll listen back to footage later and hear something that you couldn't hear at the time. But with a spirit box, despite the really obnoxious sound... Um, you can usually hear a voice come through mm -hmm. that is... Could um, answer your questions like in person. In real time. Yeah. And so there's another one, the Spirit Box 7, which is what this is, is 
one of the most popular versions of the spirit box. There's also a spirit box 11, which is equally popular. Mm -hmm. The other ones I've never heard of in my entire life. Everyone hits seven through 11 is or... seven and 11. And that's it. <laughs> um, 11 is extra special. It looks really overwhelming. When I had to learn how to use one, when I was ghost hunting, it um, scared me. It just has a lot of buttons to it, but it's basically two spirit boxes in one. So you can do a radio sweep using one of the channels and you can use uh, FM or AM frequencies. You can go forward or backward. It also has a faster sweep rate. So you, it, it's just a little more You can classy. like control it a little more. Yes. Yeah. And it has um, a temperature gauge in it. So it can also tell you if there's <laughs> Ooh, heat a thermometer, <laughs> a <laughs> temperature <laughs> gauge. <laughs> I don't know. So well, in, in ghost hunting uh, tech, they usually call it ATDD, which stands for ambient temperature deviation detection. Okay. It's a thermometer. It's a thermometer. All right. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page here. Wink. It, <laughs> wink. So an SB7 or an SB11 both do the same thing. The SB11 is a little fancier. You can also get um, extra gadgets for things like this. So there's something called an ANC, which is an adjustable noise control. And it basically filters out the, the, like, whoosh, whoosh, the whoosh. horrible parts of it. So your voices come out clearer. You can use Faraday pouches. Mm. You can use this machine called the portal, which sounds very scary. <laughs> Immortal <does>. portal. <laughs> <laughs> um, shout out to Zach Bagan's Maybe that's award winning about. song. <laughs> anyway, that is the spirit box. Okay, great. Can So you talked about um, EVPs for a brief moment. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about EVPs since that was the thing you said was slightly different from a spirit box. Genius. Mm, thank you. you. I know. But so, thank you. What you would use in that case is a digital recorder. Um, this is, I think, the most preferred version. If you go on any ghost hunting store websites, it's usually this exact version that people offer. And what is it offer. for people listening? It's an Olympus, and it is a WS-852. And for re the record, I used to use these um, in journalism school for interviews, uh, plug in a mic uh, into that. So, I mean, they're multi-purpose. Multi <laughs> yeah. Um, my favorite thing about this one is that it has an internal battery of almost 70 hours. <laughs> oh so if you're going ghost hunting for like fully overnight until morning, you don't have to worry about this battery dying. Yeah, and I would argue it's very cool to just have running in the background because you never mm -hmm. know if like, you know, you're just having a conversation with someone and maybe somebody wants to say something. Yeah. Um, and there is playback function. So if you wanted to have an EVP session, mm -hmm. um, you could just turn this on and ask some questions, turn it off and listen to the file right away mm -hmm. um, and see if you caught anything. And yeah. there's actually an accessory that just came out called the EVP spike that you can hold next to this and it will also pick up EVPs, but it will light up to let you know while you're filming, it will show you like a time like code. Like rewind real quick. You caught something. Uh -huh, okay, exactly. Okay, now that's genius. I think that's the smartest thing I've found so far in stores. Where I like, think, um, I will tell you as someone who has listened to hours of <laughs> audio. blank audio <laughs> looking for an EVP, I would have killed for there yeah. to be some sort of visual. Kind of wish we had known about that sooner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will say, I think one of the coolest things to me about an EVP is that you don't even need to be ghost hunting to catch one. Mm -hmm. Like you can pick up on say our audio equipment that we're recording on or exactly, um, you know, anything. And, and the difference between that and the spirit box is that spirit box you hear in real time and the EVP basically you just have to rewind to listen to and a funky little gadget that always gets christine all like ticklish for some reason is that this has a built-in usb drive <laughs> i mean it just it really gets christine out. going it does because i forget it, about it just it, it retracts it's already in there and so the second you want to plug this into a computer and download your file you literally just stick it in your I, computer listen, i you wasn't the best journalist i just got too over eager about the <laughs> the things that i wasn't supposed to be excited about but anyway that's that's a, a digital recorder wonderful um, and then I would like you to explain something to me. Oh boy. I, there's nothing I love more than seeing you talk about dowsing rods. They really so get excited. you going. You know what? I actually, um, okay, here they are. So for those of you who are listening, uh, dowsing rods, they're, they're these, they're divining rods. They're sometimes called, and they're these two rods. And the ones that we have, um, have handles that are, whoa, <laughs> you can hear Bad me, for the audio. hear me swinging them into the mic. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Um, wish I could blame a ghost, but I think I'm just really not <laughs> controlling it very well. Um, but essentially, uh, women in my family have used these on both sides for generations. Um, they were traditionally used to find either water sources or ley lines mm. um, and other things like that that you can't see with the naked eye. 
And um, they can also be used to talk to spirits. Mm -hmm. So essentially you you give a directive um, for yes or no questions. So you would say either, you know, a lot of people do yes is when they cross over. But in my head, I've always said no because it's an X. Mm -hmm. It it made sense to me in my head. Um, I know these are getting kind of big on TikTok. And most of the people who use them on TikTok do the opposite. So I'm sure we're confusing the ghost. That's why. (laughs) Yeah. But so I always direct before I do any sort of... um, communicating with these I always give a directive at first just to make sure um and, and they then, work even when you do the directive that most people do. yes yeah mm-hmm. All right. yeah as long as you give the instruction yeah it's the same with a pendulum where you basically calibrate it yourself um hmm. so depending on how you want it to move and communicate you kind of set that at the start and then and so if in, they if they cross or right they can also pull you yeah yes so uh if you're using them for communication you know you'd might do like yes is cross no is spread apart or vice versa um and then they can also lead you it's almost um i mean you've seen this happen it's almost like a magnetic pull where it feels like somebody's on the other end like pulling the rods you. yeah it's very unsettling and mm. alarming <laughs> of an experience <laughs> and you know i actually texted my mom last night classic procrastinator and i was like tell me about dowsing rods and i have the text here because you know, I should have known something chaotic would come out of asking her that question. Surely. So first she sent me this picture, which is um, essentially, uh, she Googled it. Looks like it. a wishbone. Yeah. And so that's actually what like original, um, they actually originally looked like. So oh. you would go into the... That's a stick. Yes. Okay. They were traditionally sticks. Um, and so you would go in the woods and find the proper s- stick and you uh, it would split like a wishbone. You have one hand on each, um, on each branch. And so, um, I said, do you know anything about, you know, how they were used in our family? And she texted me a picture of my baby eating tomatoes and oh, you were going to say eating sticks. <laughs> no, well, maybe it's, it's hard to know. She eats most things in front of her path. Um, she said, my grandma on my dad's side used to, uh, look for them in the woods. And then my mom said, I need to go hiking. So, okay. So I can find some. Okay, great um mommy daughter date (laughs) yeah sure 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 and then she said we mostly use them for fun or to scare friends you called people who could do it because you would never want to build a house on an underground spring or above moving water so that's yeah that's what they were traditionally used for also if you were interested in buying a house you wanted to make sure it wasn't built on like a water source or like above a spring oh okay um and if it's too late and you've already bought a house or built a house on top of water source you want to make sure your bed is not above it this is just old tradition um to get better so every realtor should have one yeah in theory (laughs) you don't even need one just go get a stick that's true yeah yeah interesting because now they're all made of like copper or brass yeah 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 these are typically metal nowadays um i wonder if they're more effective or if using sticks meant that, like, you had to have more some sort of power inside of you to control the yeah, stick? Yeah, I don't know. Or? I think the theory is even with these that you really have to. Because I read a couple articles and people who use these professionally, so to speak, say, like, if you don't believe that it works, it's not ever going to work. So essentially mm-hmm. it's just all about the intention of, you know, directing <laughs> them to help you find or communicate or find whatever you're looking for Fun. um and then she said all this about houses and then she said and to chase forest nymphs and i i was on the plane and i said i don't know what to do with that information and she said in the woods there is often low laying fog nebelschwaden oh. and they are said to be nymphs teasing humans you could talk to them and befriend them you guys had ariel from disney we had the real stuff. I'm like, you. I don't think you know what Ariel from Disney is. I think she just has heard of that before. Interesting. Um, she really had me all the way until the, the nymphs. It went a little far. I mean, sure, maybe they exist. I, it but gets it worse. Was, oh. She says, those wafts of fog were my playmates. <laughs> oh, God, we're not in. You had seven siblings. You're, you play with fog. This is why people wonder what's wrong with me. Well, when your mom I, ends up in a facility one day <laughs> nothing will sound different than what's happening now no, it's like oh no she always <laughs> talks about the wafts of fog being her friends um and she said they were my playmates i concocted stories around them and she said anyway the sticks react to water and also to fog because it's made of water you know you know what so 
Sure, Renata. Anyway, that's how these work. There's crazier things in the yeah. world. And we've used these for uh, communicating with spirits. Um, I've been I've been directed certain places with them. And I know you've also, you probably, because on both sides, you have some sort of, I don't know, yeah. blood energy to Connection. these. So it, I feel like between the two of us, you probably get more accurate readings than I might. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I wonder what the science is. I don't know if you be. need... Uh, what the science would say? Well, the I science know what would the, say the nymphs in the fog. Is say, green. I think I know what the science would say, and I don't think we're going to talk about it on this podcast. Um, anyway, so yeah, those are dowsing rods. So those are fun. Great. Thank you for letting me do a little demonstration. I'm ha- I'm, I just lo- I love seeing you in action oh. with those. Um, the next thing I wanted to show, well, you pick. Is there anything oh. in particular that's catching your eye? Um, mm, the music box. We love a music box, except love. we hate these. Um, so I'm going to let you hold this one first okay. because I brought two versions. Okay. Here he is. So this is the old version, which looks a lot of our stuff, almost like a coffin. <laughs> it, does, it does look like a coffin. Um, a lot of our stuff happens to be discontinued now, which is very interesting. Um, hmm. so apparently the paranormal technology is piping hot I right now. I feel like we could start our own museum of just like relic ghost equipment. We should just start our own equipment store at this point. Okay. Um, so here's a new version. So this one is created by Paraforce, which, by the way, not an ad, but love your work if you want to <laughs> do something work. with that. Um, okay, so this is the older version um, that is, uh, it actually used to come with like a rubber band attached to it and everything, and it was just so flimsy and it would it would break a lot. And so pretty much after two uses uh, of this, I realized it was unusable again. And I think a lot of people probably wrote in and complained. So this is the new and improved version. It's a lot sturdier. A lot sturdier. And... This one you could only keep on tables. It wasn't allowed to get moved when it was turned on. And this one is handheld. So you can so carry what it happened? Like, how does it... So it's a music box. So. It's a music box. Um, it is uh, used when you're trying to contact uh, either often Victorian spirits because it's got a very, like, it's got some music from that time playing. It also is a trigger object for children's spirits. It's also a trigger object for music-loving spirits. So if you happen to be somewhere, like, in a theater or something, um, this is a motion detector that traces differences in light. So if you leave it in a, in a room and it's able to catch the kind of general light if it picks up a shadow or a movement at all in front of it within a certain range, it will set off by playing music to let you know something's there. And it's like creepy music, like when you see a ballerina spinning on a music box. Let's give everyone oh, a taste. God. Okay. That's enough of that. I think we can all agree that's enough. So uh, basically what you can do is set this somewhere, or at least with this version, you had to set it down. Um, But it was useful when you were just leaving it in a room with a camera, and if you left the room, something might walk by, and the music would set off, and you'd know something had passed through it. And I will say... um our butts have set this thing off yes. so many times because like if you accidentally back into the path, it'll start going like ting, ting, tinkle, tinkle, tinkle. If you hit its zone at all, Oy. music starts going crazy. The number of times we jumped out of our skin hearing <laughs> just, that. Just playing with it. As soon as it came in the Ugh. mail and we turned it on, Ugh. we it just it, we kept running into it's it. Unsettling. So. Um, but yeah, so now this it's just kind of something you can say, oh, if you want, if you're interested in music, you can step in front of this thing and it'll play music for you to dance. And mm-hmm. I've heard of stories of people um, catching EVPs through this of like someone laughing as if they're dancing to the music. <gasps> I hate that. Spooky. I uh, love it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but that is the Paranormal Music Box. The Paraforce one is called the Polter Tune. They've got crazy names for all their stuff. Polter Tune. The Polter Tune. Um, <laughs> and that is the one that you can get now. The original Paranormal Music Box, I don't think they make anymore. So, um, But that's the Music Box. I love that. I'm kind of pulling them away as we go through Yeah, why don't it. you tell me a little bit about Boo Buddy? <laughs> Which would you like because his little friend's hiding behind him? Yeah. Let's Peek-a-boo. do both at the same time. Peek-a-boo. They're pretty similar. Pretty similar. So I will lead in actually with uh, this K2 reader, the one with, that's glowing right now. Mm-hmm. And then the thing beside it that's lying on its side is called a rook. They're more or less the same thing. The rook happens to be more sensitive, but basically they both pick up on electromagnetic activity or any um, surges in the electromagnetic field. Um, if you're new here or just want to hear it again, in theory, spirits are made of electromagnetic activity or they can manipulate electromagnetic energy in the space and let you know that they're there. Right. So that's the main purpose of either of those two machines. And uh, that leads to Boo Buddy. There's Boo Buddy. All roads lead to Boo Buddy. 
<laughs> and that will be on a short one. <laughs> um, there is Boo Buddy, and then there's Boo Buddy Jr. Yep. Um, Boo Buddy Jr. is not as advanced. It's a little simpler. He's a simple Boo Buddy. And basically, he's just an EMF detector. Oh, and if you're listening, this, these are teddy bears. They're, oh, yes. <laughs> They're, They're like a bu- Boo Buddy. Whatever you were imagining, it was not that. Honestly, whatever you're imagining, I would love to know. <laughs> draw, draw a picture, send it in. Thank yeah. you so much. Um, but yeah, so Boo Buddy, they're just um, teddy bears. The Boo Buddy Jr. is a smaller teddy bear. Um, your pets will attack them, yep. just so you know. Yep. Um, I was dog sitting and we almost lost Boo Buddy Jr. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> so, um, but Boo Buddy Jr. is basically just an EMF detector, except the reason why they're teddy bears is because they're supposed to be trigger objects for children. Um, children so, ghosts. Children ghosts. Yeah. Or children. Or children. Um, or but, dogs, apparently. Oh, apparently. Um, so if you leave it in a room uh, by itself, you can say like, oh, you know, if you feel comfortable, you can just, uh, we, we left you a toy. You can go up to the toy. And just by the spirit being near Boo Buddy, at least Boo Buddy Jr., the lights in its belly is a K2 meter. And it will light off to let you know that something is near it. And they're both wearing backpacks. They're both wearing, that's one of the genius parts of the design is that it hides all the wires and everything in this little backpack. So This has a little backpack on. So Boo Buddy, the bigger one, um, he is... Very, he's very versatile, I he's suppose. He's very vocal. Very vocal. He talks. That's yeah. a big difference. Um, he also can not only pick up EMF uh, changes, but he also detects changes in vibration, in temperature, in... Um, in ACDC or whatever you said the temperature thermometer is called. Oh, the thermometer. Hang on. I have I have Boo Buddy uh, written down because he actually... He's very advanced. He is. It like it blows my mind. Okay, he detects EMF, movement, temperature, and vibrations. Wow. So, um, and he also, like Christine says, Boo Buddy talks to you, mm. um, and he has different versions of speech. So, if he asks a question, um, a lot of people will take that as, "Oh my gosh, something happened," because Boo Buddy started talking. But every thirty seconds, Boo Buddy's going to ask a question to try to prompt children's spirits to give you an EVP. I'll tell you, it sounds, it feels like every five seconds because <laughs> if you set him down, he just blabbers away. Um, and even I've used this thing and uh, this <laughs> wonderful friend, and uh, yeah. So you explained it that yeah. So if it's asking a question, if he's asking a question, it's sort of like trying to prompt the spirit. But if he makes a statement, mm-hmm. it's in reaction to something external, right? Yes. So he has, just like Boo Buddy Jr., he has a K2 reader in his belly. And if it glows, it'll let you know that there's a change in the EMF uh, field or in the EM field. But um, if he says anything, that lets you know that there's a change in temperature or a change in movement or a change in vibration. So he'll say like, oh, it's warm in uh, here uh, now. Oh, I can tell you exactly what he says. Okay. He says, <laughs> that tickles, which is not good. <laughs> That's to let you know if he feels movement change, if he gets moved around. He'll say, er, it's chilly in here. Mm-hmm. He'll say, did you say something? <laughs> yes. Yes, Ugh, he will. That's the one that gets me. Because, like, I'd be like, hey, Eva, do you want to move Boo? But did you say something? I'm like, yes, I did. Stop yelling. It, it is. the Those 30 seconds of silence really trick you into thinking he's not going to say anything oh, it, again. Sh- out of nowhere. So it's a, it really it scares you every time because you think Let's play. Oh my god! So anyway, if you were to have your own boo buddy, I would suggest having either a camera and or a digital recorder next to it, so that we can pick up any EVPs of children spirits that show up, right. or the camera can pick up if his belly glows green. So or you can just have a nice little soundtrack of him chatting away, or you can have a snuggle with the mm, little boo buddy. Just, <laughs> just call it a night. Yeah. Anyway, that's um, boo buddy. I know we're we're uh, running out of time, so I don't want to take up. Oh, yeah. Too much more of anyone's stuff. But um, I can do like a rapid fire real quick yeah, if you'd like. Because I know you got I'll get your my thing notes to ready. Get to. Okay. So, uh, KT Reader and the Rook, we've already done. The This guy, which if you'd like to hold it for Oh, everybody. I love this guy. So, this is a thermal imager. And basically, all it does is it registers heat signatures and it can let you know dramatic changes in temperature. I think it goes from like negative 10 to like 800 or something, like degrees. I'll say my stepdad has this just for finding air leaks in the house. Yes. So I was going to say, one of the best things about this is if you notice a temperature change, you can use it to actually, it'll show heat signatures in the walls to let you know slash be able to debunk if there's leaks or if there's um, Mm. missing insulation or maybe there's a power grid under you that's causing a heat wave Um, but it's a really good way that if you sense temperature change or if one of these other meters goes off it'll let you know oh can we put the picture in if we still have it 
that I yes. captured that one time. Yes, we actually got a, a, a full heat signature of a man standing next to us. I was like, who's that? By the And it was over by the controls and... Anyway, we'll tell me more about that next week. But, um, but yeah, I, I've caught what I thought was like a, a person standing there. And the cool thing with this is you can like snap a, a snapshot of the heat signature. Do you know how many pictures this can hold in one sitting with its internal memory? I have memory? literally no idea. 55,000. Oh, how many did I take? 54,000? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I almost maxed it out. <laughs> so. so maybe that's the thermal imager. That's a, that's a really easy one. Because it also comes with a laser, so you can point and click in any part, any point that a laser can touch. It'll uh, even I love the lasers. It'll tell you the exact We're temperature. We're like cats. <laughs> we just have fun with the lasers. That, speaking of lasers, this is Eva's actual favorite part oh, of boy. any of the equipment we have. Which today, it's choosing not to work. Last night when I tried this, it was working. So dun, dun, dun. Sarah Winchester strikes again. But no um, lasers under her roof. This is just a simple laser. They actually come up, they have much more fancy apparatuses now. Um, I think they actually have one that can uh, like measure shadows and everything by like the inch, like crazy things. But basically the only point of having a laser, especially if you have one with one of those like grid scopes, so it, it looks like a whole wall of stars mm -hmm. or like something. Like projects sort of. Projects on, on the whole wall. Yeah. Um, the whole point of it is it's just if you leave this in front of a camera, if something walks past it, you'll see the disturbance in the lasers. You'll see that something passed through it. And it's just a way to let you know that, hey, if no one was in the room and something went through the lasers, that was nobody yeah, that, else's that shadow. shouldn't be happening. Yeah. So that's what this is. Um, so you would recommend like filming that area definitely if you filming. were leaving the room. Definitely. Too. Okay. This is definitely something you leave in a room gonna by itself. It's not going to set off like a sound. Because otherwise you're going to walk through it and think you found a ghost. <laughs> Been there. Um, Been there many times. <laughs> Uh, this is a phasm cam. This is kind of the, the newest version of ghost hunting camera equipment. I actually personally like the now discontinued version more, but, um, this is a full spectrum camera, which means you, it catches visible light, it catches infrared and it catches, uh, ultraviolet and infrared is what people call night vision. So if you get anything that has full spectrum, it means that it's seeing things, whether or not it is pitch black in the room. Which is when you see, when you watch Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, and, and they green have that or purple. kind of like spooky tint to it, that's um, that's the infrared night vision. Exactly. So yeah. that's the camera. Um, on top of that, there is this guy right here. This is um, a floodlight. That I is, love that guy. It, oh, there you go. It's purpley. It's purpley. Half of it is visible and half of it is not because the top half is infrared and it's catching everything in night vision currently. So for those of you listening, it's basically a little little rectangular box that says it's phantom a, light. It's basically, it's more or less a floodlight. So that way your camera can capture even better quality images when it's filming. So, But it's just... But it's like, it has night vision included. It has night vision and everything. So if you have a camera that doesn't have full spectrum, you can use one of these floodlights with it. And Just that to way... light the room in infrared. How cool is exactly. that? And um, it does work with cameras that already are full spectrum. You'll just get doubly bright light. <laughs> doubly infrared. <laughs> doubly infrared. Um, and then I think we've only got one, two, three, four things left. Okay. So this is um, really quickly, this is similar to a Boo Buddy. This is called an EDI sure Plus. Sure doesn't look as cute. It does not look as cute, but it's so much more durable. It literally comes with this huge. It looks very intimidating. Backing. Yeah. Um, it just looks like a brick with a lot of buttons for people wondering. That's how most equipment it's also looks. Also neon orange. Neon orange covering. And what I love about this, this is actually like probably one of the more expensive things that I think we spent our What's money on. What's it called? Uh, an EDI plus it uh, checks for temperature. It also does EMF. It also measures for vibrations, but also what other machines don't do. It looks for um, barometric pressure and humidity changes. Uh -huh. And it's got a graphing uh, data log in it. Oh, geez. So basically what it does is you can press record and you have a memory card in here and it's going to record all of those measures for as long as the oh, machine so is on. So you can then visualize after. So then after you go ghost hunting, you can take the memory card out and put it in your computer and it will create a spreadsheet for you on any fluctuations nice at any point. Excel sheet for you. I, That's for the data nerds. I'm, I'm more like, Where's the lasers? Well, it's so useful when like, if you're, you know, recording in a room and you think something happened, 
you know you can check the time yeah, code you can sync and up yeah then go back to the spreadsheet and be like oh my god the humidity changed um or the temperature changed and you can even do there's one button on here where you can just press a button and if you think something happened it will mark it for you so uh, the graph later will like let you know that this is moment. something you were curious about okay well that i did not know about that is <laughs> very cool that you can hit a button it's one of my favorites because it just it, it checks on so many it's things it's a very cool concept this one's easy to explain really quick. This is a shadow tracker. It tracks shadows. Wow. Um, it has several sensitivities and modes. It'll tell you what direction the shadow came from. It'll... This thing is a big black box that looks like bigger than M's head. Big black box. It's got a bunch of what should be LEDs, but it has um, been used a lot and is now broken. It's been banged up a bit. But uh, it's supposed to just, it also works with infrared light. So if it's pitch black, this will still catch shadows. Okay. Um, and then... We've got our REM pod and our MEL meter, which oh, geez. the REM pod uh, and MEL meter, a MEL meter basically just picks up EMF detection and has ATDD, which means it is a big thermometer. Right. The REM pod, uh, so anytime you see a machine that says REM, I know I've been talking forever. I'm sorry, Christine. No, go for it. But anytime you see something that say, says REM, it stands for radiating electromagnetic. Okay. So that means it's creating its own electromagnetic field. Uh -huh. So that way with all these other... Um, pieces of equipment when ghosts are using them in theory they're depleting their own energy trying to manipulate this machine so that it can show you're there i see but this pumps out its own energy so that way a ghost isn't depleting its own energy in fact it can use this field and if it enters the field at all if it tries to mess with the machine at all it's not wearing itself out it's using the energy from this machine and when it does enter this field it goes it it's makes horribly horrible shrieking noise. noises and it lights up and it's an extremely horrible sound that I don't think we should test out. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair can, enough. We can, but that's that's it for me. I've got one more, but I'll I'll do it as like a, a closing out afterwards oh, okay. that I think I think you'll like a lot. Ooh, okay. But uh, that's it for do the. I, do I know equipment. what it is or no? You do know what it is, but I think you'll like that we save it for last. Is it lemon? It's not. We already did lemon, oh, but fine. lemon and Boo Buddy can hang out together Look for at them. your part. Okay. Um. This is what I did. I at first, because we had sort of discussed a plan here, and at first I was going to look up, you know, real life stories of how this equipment works and, and real life examples. And I, I did find some online and then it hit me. I was like, we have a treasure trove of stories in our freaking email inbox. <laughs> I'm going to go see like what our listeners have sent in about using this equipment and see if there's anything good. Oh, there's some good stuff. You know, I I did I said in the beginning because I was like, oh, I'm going to cover ghost hunting, ghost hunting equipment we have, and you do like actual stories from mm -hmm. that. And I thought I was getting the easier end of it because I was like, I can't. Poor Christine, she has to go looking for stories. Didn't even occur to we me that em. we have an inbox. We had them. Wow. To be well, fair, I spent a long time not thinking of that. <laughs> So I did waste quite a bit of my time on like Reader's Digest. Oh, Christine. I, that's what I would have done too. Yeah. I would have used my Beach to Sandy trick. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Like, I go did. on Yelp or I was, something. I was yelping it and I couldn't find a gosh darn thing. Well, I'm very... I read this whole story and I was like, wow, this is so good. And then, oh my God. What I, happened? I bookmarked it and then I went back to like, to like copy paste and, you know, get all the right credits. Realized it was from a... um a fiction writing contest that somebody had oh won my gosh. about a parent. It was called the spirit box and it was a fictional story. I was like, but wow. apparently it was damn good. I gotta say I was <laughs> impressed. Um, so, you know, I did some light reading on the side, but I'm happy for you. Well, I, I'm excited. Yeah, I can't wait to see what some of our I listeners have, have actually gone really through. fun ones. I even have some like examples to show you of what <gasps> they sent us. Okay. okay I have okay, my which, headphones ready. Yeah. Which I we've haven't never heard these before. No, you haven't. And we've never done this before. Like played actual, oops, sorry, played actual clips, um, that people have sent in. So I'm kind of mm -hmm. excited about that, but First, I searched for dowsing rod stories, and I found this one from Eric from November of 2018. So a lot of wow. these are old, and I don't know if they still listen. So. Eric, Eric, wherever you are, I hope you're well. Well, Eric says, M, Christine, and Geo, I hope this finds you well. It did in 2022, Eric. It, it Thank sure you. did. <laughs> We're doing okay. I wanted to share with you two quick experiences I've had with the spirits in my area. So I think I'm just going to, yeah, I'm just going to read the first one, um, okay. which is a dowsing rod story. So here we go. <gasps> I'm so excited. Ah! So in my small picturesque town in Southeast Missouri, there's a road that goes from the city and quickly turns to countryside after you cross a very sharp turn on a low water bridge. If you don't know the turn is coming and you don't slow your ass down, you'll go nose first into a creek. Locals call it burnout bridge. 
Mm. I've had a handful of friends tell me how they've been driving through late at night and have seen a tall creature that stands like a human, but otherwise appears like a huge dog in all other aspects. Forget it. Immediately forget it. I've driven that road many nights with my friends and I've never seen it. Never really gave it any thought. Then one night I met up with three friends, two of them I hadn't seen in quite some time, but they heard that I had dabbled in ghost hunting. It was pretty simple that I only used dowsing rods and they wanted to see if anything would communicate with us at the bridge. Hmm. We parked and I asked some simple questions and was getting punctual and precise responses. Is there a spirit here? Yes. Are you old? Yes. (gasps) Are you good or malevolent? Malevolent. Uh, Really? (laughs) The worst question to ask. I know. But also the most intriguing. Also M's favorite. Like, do you want to harm me? Ooh. I'm like, don't ask that. I just always hope the answer is no. Don't give them the idea. And then I'm somehow upset. Then you're surprised. I'm like, like, what do you think you're going to do? Eric says, I'm pretty empathic and have strong feelings, and I began feeling uneasy. When I don't feel confident about who I'm speaking with, I usually close the connection. Hmm. I asked one more question. Where are you? We were sitting in my friend's car, and the dowsing rods pointed behind me where my car was parked. Why? (laughs) Sayonara. I freaked the fuck out. One of the friends I hadn't seen in a while, as it turns out, dabbled in Wiccan things while on a spiritual search of her own and decided to take over. She told the spirit that it knows better than to enter somewhere without being invited. Oh. When asked if it was breaking the rules, it said that it wasn't. So she said maybe it was because I'd left my car windows down. Maybe it oh. felt like it was an open invitation. Or maybe invitation. it was lying. <laughs> or maybe it was malevolent. I feel like if it says it's malevolent and then you're like, are you breaking the rules? And it goes, no. I would never. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so all of a sudden we started to smell wet dog. See ya. And by the way, as a dog owner, that is a very it's a rancid distinct smell. smell. Like you know what it is. I love a dog. I, I don't love a wet but one. they're not. A hundred percent perfect. They don't smell great when they're wet. Um, and Eric says, which I've heard is a sign of a demon along with, you know, a goddamn dog creature. <laughs> yeah. That'll do it, Eric. <laughs> uh-huh. I just know that I was ready to leave those damn dowsing rods in the creek with this beast. Months later, I drove through again with different friends who didn't know about my experience. I crossed that bridge and immediately all my car electronics turned off. <gasps> the screen, the backlights on the controls, the only light that remained was my speedometer and headlights. I stopped talking to my friends. Our music abruptly stopped. I was stoic. No one said a word, but they know it's nothing good when I become that quiet. I like that you call yourself stoic and not like shitting your pants <laughs> yeah. because like that's, oh, I'm just being stoic. stoic. I'm just going to throw yeah. my dowsing rods over this bridge. <laughs> I'm just going to go catatonic, but no, no, it's stoic. But don't worry. I'm very calm. About a mile past, everything rebooted as if I had just started my car. Then I hear, uh, why did everything turn off? And I started to tell my story. I should also mention a few weeks after that, I drove past and every th- everything turned off and rebooted the exact same way. Mm. I don't go out that way anymore. Good call. Thanks for reading and thanks for your great content and work. See you in St. Louis, Missouri, Eric. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Old times. <laughs> old times. What old tour. Louis? Yeah. So um, that was a dowsing rod story. Great. Mm-hmm. Um, terrible. Terrible and also great. <laughs> this might be one of my favorite. I have one more dowsing rod story. This is from okay. Casey in March of 2019. He says, I had never really had any experiences with the paranormal before, but I loved watching all the ghost shows I could find on TV. My fiance and I went to Hannibal, Missouri. Okay, they're both Missouri stories. That's weird. Hmm. On a ghost tour that drives around town and stops at supposedly haunted buildings talking about the history. It ends at a cemetery where we got to use dowsing rods to try and communicate. I was holding the rods and walking around, not really sure if I was following the rods or if my hands were moving on their own. I was following the rods as they turned in this direction and the next, and then they started to cross, so I stopped. Thinking I did something wrong, I shined my flashlight around at the tombstones, and in front of me was one with the name Herbert Jr. Jones. I was shocked. My grandpa had passed away a few years ago, and his name was Herbert Jr. Jones. You're lying. I mean, truly, you're, hello? That can't be true. <laughs> I didn't have any negative feelings, and almost a calm sensation came over me. I haven't experienced anything since then, but this will definitely stick with me for a long time to come. Wow, how spooky in, like, a good way, but, like... A, what a weird way it's sort of like someone was like oh you're finally using something i can use to send you a little sign yeah and then from from their perspective i imagine it's like a like what are the odds i would find this yeah wow. yeah especially wow. because like it really does feel like 
you're being pulled by somebody. It feels mm -hmm. almost like someone's like dragging you with them. I've seen it. I've seen it happen. I've luckily never been pulled, but I, I don't it's really a very want to either. Unsettling feeling, but um, sounds like it Herbert was. Herbert Junior Jones was happy to pull on those dowsing rods. Like what? It's not time. like Sam Smith. It's like a it's unique so name specific. too. Oh so my gosh, specific. I love that. Um, so the next category I looked up were, of course, EVPs have to yeah and you so these are the last couple i have um and uh here's the first one it's a short one from sam they them july of 2022 this was sent. oh recent. very recent hey, so you might still be there be here sam <laughs> uh sam says my experience takes place the night before halloween 2021 a few of my roommates and i decided to do one of those haunted house things at an old hospital slash reform school for girls near my college town that's all i need to hear <laughs> the end the end thanks sam <laughs> Like most haunted places, they had their own stories, including a little girl ghost who can be seen by guests near the exit. My story... Oh, sorry. Ah! That was oh, me. I knocked him over. That was Lemon for sure. <laughs> my story includes my roommate, Elise's EVP. During the tour and being scared by actors, she had it recording until we reached the end. When we were sat in the car, we heard two words in a quiet part walking between buildings that weren't us talking. One was a little girl that said, no more... And one was an adult male voice that said, vegetables. <laughs> we thought it was weird, but went to dinner. The creepy part happened while we were at dinner when I was reading articles trying to find out more about the history of this place. In one of the articles, a lady who grew up across the street and used to play in abandoned buildings with her sister recalled an experience where her sister locked her in a cabinet in the house and went home. <gasps> First of all, demonic child demonic living child yeah Whoa. like actual child oh my gosh uh so this lady as a child was stuck in the cabinet for a while before a ghost opened it up and as she was leaving the cabinet the ghost said we need more vegetables <laughs> and that was the quote in the article and the ghost was renata by the way because it's the <laughs> the fog and i discussed it and we really need vegetables you on the don't grocery list eat enough vitamins <laughs> what a weird uh, for, well first of all like i can't imagine a ghost just open I mean, that's not even a, oh, the door opened by itself. That's a, oh, so a full-blown apparition mm -hmm. could see you needed help. Or maybe not. Like, maybe it was like maybe a blueprint just, thing. Maybe it was just like they were opening, checking the pantry and you saying to we need it. more vegetables. We're out of veggies. Open the cabinet. Whoa. Spooky. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, and I love that, like, they got a clip of vegetables. We're like, that's weird. And then, like, found this article and said, hold on. Meanwhile, I have gotten some crazy EVPs that make no sense. And you wonder, like, maybe if that did have some sort of meaning that you just don't know about like maybe yeah well replaying. i'm clearly not looking at, uh, at the right <laughs> uh, the vegetable newspaper Got apparently it. talk to anyone who's uh stuck in the cabinets um the way what? that sorry that was so that was so freaky so eerie right yeah the way that we also got that word and a word that isn't very common to be used and it was in the article is really strange oh and this place was actually featured in ghost adventures what, i'm not sure what it. season or episode but it's the saint anthony reform school so oh, if you're ever around those parts you know uh, who's check it out you know where Zach Bagans has also been. Where's that? Ding dong, right Winchester here. Winchester Mystery House. Oh, And was like, didn't he take his shirt off here? I was like, he takes his shirt off everywhere. I feel like he took his shirt off here and like asked if Sarah Winchester liked his tattoos or something. Oh boy, oh I, boy. Oh. I really hope that's wrong because uh, everything we heard about Sarah Winchester today is that she's like the last person on earth who deserves that <laughs> yeah she's <laughs> like let her live in peace okay she's probably like oh my god she probably was just rolling her eyes at him but no we uh it is weird that we, I, the last time i i have been here but the last time i saw this place was watching the episode of ghost adventures and i was like oh wow like this is it's definitely pretty, where they walk it's around pretty cool to see it in real life after it's that funky. i imagine it's funky um, okay, so I only have two more, and um, this first one has an audio file for you to listen to that accompanies it. Okay. All right, so I'll read you the story, and then I will play you the clip. Okay, sounds All good. All right. This is from Kay from August of 2018. Kay says, I just started listening to your podcast a few months ago. Uh, I'm glad I oh, came across it while looking through comedy podcasts on Spotify. hey -o. And my mom and I binged the podcast for Mother's Day. <laughs> It's fun. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Anyways, I wanted to share my experience from Mansfield Reformatory. That's <gasps> that in one's Ohio. in Ohio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way back when I was married and still very much in Narnia. I assume that means in like 
their like old what, life the honeymoon phase or something yeah i think like maybe they're I was like girl if you went to narnia that should be the story you're emailing us <laughs> that's the story for another Please don't day tell us about an evp <laughs> unless it's like the lion from narnia that's like such an e- <laughs> email trope we get of like but that's anyway the other time when i saw 18 demons by my bed but that's a story for another day i'm like why say it now i would love to just put in the search bar of our gmail but that's for another day yeah and just see how many weird ass lines people end an email we should, with. We should find all those lines. I bet there's some. Maybe that should be a theme for a future listeners episode. Like, just the, like but that's for another day. The story that you said today's the day that you saved all those <laughs> stories for. It's that's time for another day, and we've decided <laughs> and it is now. today. <laughs> okay. My sister-in-law hit the lotto and booked an investigation night for family and friends in her paranormal group. We walked through on the tour to find all the hot spots, as you do, and then were set free to do our own investigation. I had with me two recording devices and a camera that had night vision and all the works. Unfortunately, I didn't catch much on camera other than pics that could be easily explained away as matrixing. What's that? Matrixing. Maybe it's like when lights make... I don't know. I don't know I what know that is. I just like made everyone think I'm an expert for the last 45 minutes, but I have no idea what I that mean, is. I'll she, take it. She is a Narnia, so who knows? <laughs> it's, just, it's not part of our world over here. We don't know that. I spent time alone in solitary and felt some heaviness, but nothing got recorded. I didn't even get to experience the pushing around described in the tour that happens to some investigators. Oh, nuts. Oh, boo. <laughs> but around 1 or 2 a.m., I was walking through the front of the prison alone where they did intake for prisoners. I was asking questions and almost giving up on any activity happening that night when I heard a yell. At that point, I thought it was my group and figured the investigation was over and they were rounding everyone up. I walked toward the next room where I heard the scream and in the room I found no one. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Later, when I went through all the photos I took and the video and the recordings, I found that the scream I heard was actually a disembodied voice. I'm sending you the cut down version of the clip with just the scream. Keep <gasps> up the good work. You're amazing. We enjoy listening to your stories. Thanks again, Kay. So I have this scream. Also, I'm friends with a lion in Narnia, but that's for another day. <laughs> but that's for another day. <laughs> I live in Narnia. Um, okay. okay, so you got your headphones? I'm ready when you are. All right, with the dongle. Dongles attached. Dingle, dangle, dongle. Okay, so is this connecting a pair of headphones? Yes. All right, so here it is. I hope you can hear it. Okay. Um, I don't also want to, you know, ruin your ears, so... Let me know. I'll, I'll play it a few times. Do a, uh, I'm, I, uh, a slight, like in the middle of medium and loud. Okay. <laughs> I straight up heard that. <laughs> Isn't that gross? <laughs> that's a full blown scream. It's screaming. That's a full, that's a full ass man screaming. Inside a prison. Yeah, it sounded like he was in pain for sure. It's or hurt or, or just crying for upset. help or something. Yeah. Yeah, unsettling. I heard pain. I heard pain. And to, yeah, and to think like, oh, um, maybe that's the tour group. And then like, nope, they're not here. I heard either pain or like someone like truly losing it, like in solitary. Yeah, or something. yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Like point. just kind of losing it. <sighs> um, wow. So that's the first one I got. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Kay. And now oh I have. Oh my gosh, that was so spooky. I have our finale here. <gasps> This one has a little bit of everything because I wanted to touch on some things. So we have uh, the spirit box is mentioned. Uh, we have EMFs mentioned and EVPs. So um, EVPs. There, look yeah. at all this. There's no boo buddy in this story, but you know we EMF, can use our EVP, imagination. Yeah. All right. Um, and so I'm going to read this to you. Uh, first of all, it's from Lauren from July of 2021, and the subject is our ghost hunt at the Zach Bagel Bites Museum. God. <laughs> So, of you course, <laughs> it's the finale for many reasons, including that subject. At least in our hearts, it is always the oh, finale. It's the finale for sure. Um, and it has two clips that I'm going to play okay. for you. So let me read the story first. It says, I recently came back from a trip to Vegas with my fiance, Josh. And before we arrived, I insisted on going to Mr. Bagel Bites Haunted Museum for a tour. Mm-hmm. After a bunch of eye rolling, he agreed to go with me on the day tour. What a good sport. To my surprise, he had an absolute blast, and he immediately asked if we could do the ghost hunt at the museum later that night. Everyone has a good time. I know we, I know we say a lot of things about bagel bites, but that is one great show. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, he he is a businessman. He is an entertainer. If 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 anything, (laughs) he's those two things. So he even bought me a ghost hunting kit from the gift shop so we could use it that night. I knew I agreed to marry him for a reason. So romantic. 
Fast forward to that evening, we're waiting outside for the rest of the attendance, and of course, a storm is starting to roll in, making my anxiety worse as I'm questioning my life choices. Hmm. We get inside, and Josh starts the EVP recorder that came with our kit so we could document the whole experience. As we walk around with nothing but our flashlights, we hear an EMF meter going bananas in the room with the devil's rocking chair. <gasps> I don't remember that. Oh, that one? Um, that wasn't there when you and I were there, but it was there when I went with Allison last oh. year. And apparently, it, they actually had to close down the uh, exhibit for a few months because the like within the first like three months of it being open multiple people needed like severe back surgery what ew because if you sat in the chair oh, if you sat forget it well some people don't were, sit in that you just like walk by it but i guess at the time they were offering like if you want to sit in the chair like you've been warned like people they say that their back hurts remember afterwards when ck touched the chair the haunted chair I do remember that. <laughs> I'll never forget. Absolutely CK, not. don't you dare sit in that chair. Don't sit in that no. chair. I'm warning you. I'm you warning you will not be the first that needs back surgery. Yeah, afterwards. We don't need to we don't need to do do any GoFundMe's for any of our listeners. But the devil's rocking chair was in an uh a oh I'm not gonna remember, of course, right now, but it was an exorcist story I covered, um, or a possession story I covered at one point. Oh. And the chair is from the exorcism oh, that was done in, yeah. in that story. I do remember. You, I feel like you mentioned it. If you go to and that's why we drink.com <laughs> and click the listen tab, you'll see our episode guide. And you can probably just control F the word possession and see what happens. And see 60,000 episodes <laughs> and maybe listen to all of them and find the rocking chair. You'll do it. You'll find it. You'll, you'll find it. it. So the EMF meter is going bananas in the room with the devil's rocking chair. We start asking the usual questions. If there's anyone that wants to talk to us, are you still here, etc. The EMF detector has been quiet for a while and we decide to move on. It's when we leave and Josh says, I definitely want to come back here that the recording device picks up a loud voice that says in an Irish accent, you won't find us, priest. See ya. I have a clip of that and uh, it is extremely unsettling so i'm gonna play that should i play that now yes you should i'll play it now also i think the possession case was arnie cheyenne johnson oh yes that's just right that's never right. No, nothing's ever come to my head that quickly in my life and i'm gonna play um so remind me again what i'm hearing okay so lauren actually put uh made a video and put captions here so we can Lauren's actually i know genius. okay so this is uh in an irish accent uh after Josh says, I definitely want to come back here, the voice says, you won't find us, priest. Mm. All right. And here you can watch it as you. Okay. I definitely want to come back here. You won't find us, priest. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Are you horrible? kidding me? That's not even like, you don't even have, I didn't no. even need the words. Yeah. And it was that just was, them. That was honestly, okay, so I know other people will have just heard this, but in real time, as I'm experiencing it before you, like the saying, I want to come back here was harder to hear. Yeah. than the actual phrase that, and that, that was loud, crystal clear, no, like without question, that was like, a man in the room yeah, saying it. Yes. Okay. So one let me more play time. it one more time. I definitely want to come back here. You won't find us for it sounds like he's watching TV in the background yeah, or something. Yeah, freaky? That's how, it's like clear as day. Yeah. And so there, there's a little more context to that uh, in a little bit. Um, so Lauren says, at this moment, everyone else is investigating upstairs and we're downstairs. Everyone was respectful and quiet the whole time we were there, yet it sounds like someone shouting. And so that's that's that. Yeah. Yeah. Probably worst of all, we did not hear this voice at all until I played the recording much later, which we've experienced too with EVPs where it's like so loud in the recording, but... On camera, you can go back through the times, like find the right timestamp, and like we don't react because we don't hear it yeah. in real time. Exactly. Very, very creepy. I was confused as to why this voice may have been saying priest until I remembered Josh was wearing a wooden cross that belonged to his late father. Shut up. Right? Oh my God. Oh my God. Ew. Oh my God. They're like eyeing your jewelry. Ugh. They're so like, like, get out of here. Wow. Ugh. That's cr okay. So they like, that, that just makes it even worse because to hear you won't find us priests, you would think that maybe it's like the blueprint theory and they're saying like it's some, residual. It's almost. a residual, like it's not interacting with you, but for it to see you, acknowledge you and be able to intellectually say something yell, about it, yell at you. forget it. Nope. So Lauren says this led us to finally venturing down into the basement. Hi. A place where satanic rituals were once practiced and where the tour guides won't even go. And even I haven't gone. Personal note for us, when we went, it was roped off and they yeah. said you were actually not allowed to go down there. So when we went, that was what was that, twenty eighteen? Twenty eighteen. 
um when eric was writing in um (laughs) but uh no back back then when it first opened up it wasn't even an option to go in and now in the last couple years or at least since covid Mm -hmm. um because i just went with allison in 2021 uh they now have like different tier packages of your member, like oh, your, your ticket experience. And I so see. one of them is that you get like silver, like premium, whatever. And then you can go down and platinum in, experience with the platinum experience is that you get to stay after everyone else and ghost hunt well, after the museum is closed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she got like, damn. Yeah. But, but there's like a middle tier where you can like go around and walk for like five minutes, but an attendant will not go with you. They will just open the rope and say, you can go look. And when you're done, you can come back up. Like down into the basement. You mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's... So I've never seen the basement, but people I've watched people come back up afterwards and seem rattled. Not good. It just yeah. feels it's, like dread. I remember looking down the staircase with the rope in front of it and being like, thank goodness. It's not even an option well, on the yeah, table. Remember they was like, um, who was, who it was, was it Kendra? No. Who's it was some, it was someone from uh I think it was Kendra there, it was like a, a a model or it was um it was a famous person who wrote in anonymously at the time and yeah. has recently it released her name. It was someone name. named Kendra, but I remember the I remember the if I know if but I her, hear it. Her uh her and her brother apparently used to watch her parents do yes, sacrifices. Yes, and yes, stuff yes. So Lily. Um I think we've even gotten emails about that. Okay, so uh We started making contact almost immediately after asking who was down there. In our recording, you can hear the phrase, the devil, come through. Mm. Neither of us said the name, but Josh asked if I heard it, and I confirmed. I then asked, is that who was down here with us? So this is with the spirit box, by the way, so they're hearing it, like, in real time. Oh, my God. Um, I then asked, is that who is down here with us? And we immediately get the response, careful. After that, Josh gets called out again by name, and we start to get phrases like, kill, stab, everyone dead. That's when we decided to nope the fuck out of the basement and take a breather. Josh started to get pretty emotional after this and later confessed to me that he kept seeing a tall black shadow figure with white eyes in the hallways of the museum. Truly, (sighs) truly a pass. No. He doesn't really watch Ghost Adventures and didn't know anything about the museum prior to going. Once we got home, we watched the quarantine episodes where Zach and Mm -hmm. friends, TM... Uh, is what Lauren wrote, Zach and Friends TM, (laughs) investigate the museum and some of the guests talk about their experiences. There was one person in particular who, through tears, explained she saw a black shadow figure, the same one that Josh described to me. I look over to see he is visibly shaken and distressed, hearing his sighting confirmed by someone else. Luckily, I'm pretty sure nothing followed us home. Spirits just seem to really enjoy messing with my partner. <laughs> also, this poor man, like, he went in, like, kind of begrudging about even yeah. doing the normal tour, and then you got him so wired, he was like, let's do the full one, and, and then Satan he went home himself, traumatized. And Satan himself said, welcome, <laughs> Josh. Like, Josh, thanks for having interest for five seconds. <laughs> Besides hanging out with Satan himself, I got to play hide-and-seek with Lily the doll. We talked to some skeletons, and the Dybbuk box called Josh a cigarette fiend. Oh. Parentheses, he is, and he had cigarettes in his pocket. They know way too much about his, like, interior, his, his Some, accessorizing. Something about his character. His hobbies. It feels really <laughs> vulnerable. He's a smoking priest. <laughs> We caught a shit ton of voices on our digital recorder during our spirit box session, so if you want to hear any of it, let me know. As Josh and I were walking down the hallway upstairs, just deciding where to go next, we hear clear as day what sounds like a little girl laughing or singing. We both freeze, and you can hear my brain short-circuiting as I think to myself, someone brought their kid? Wait, kids aren't allowed to be here. I then ask Josh, did you Mm. hear that? He confirms that he did, and we creep toward a door on the right that's barely cracked open. Josh takes the EMF detector to the door, and it's lighting up like a Christmas tree. He fully opens the door, and surprise, it's Peggy the doll's room. Well... ETD. Kel surprise. I hope you enjoyed that story. One of the scariest nights of my life. I 100% recommend doing the flashlight tour and bringing a recorder. I don't think anyone. <laughs> Sorry. I highly recommend this experience. Yeah. 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 It's an excellent Girl, time. I don't trust you. To be I clear. don't know. about <laughs> Josh is probably like. Josh is like, I do not don't recommend. Don't you dare send anyone else in that basement, Lauren. Um, I don't think anyone would have believed some of the shit we experienced without that, without the recorder to mm-hmm. like have evidence. 
Mr. Bites even retweeted one of the recordings I captured. Wow. So I guess I can put Amateur Ghost Hunter on my resume now. And I think... Um, the Prince of Paranormal is freaked that's out. That's right. You know you've done something. I think we're going to sign off on your new resume, uh, <laughs> your new uh, addition to your resume. Thank you for all the work that you do. I look forward to your episodes every week. And y'all have even inspired me to start my own podcast Aww. with my best friend of 20 years. Uh, so I have the... The Peggy the doll. And I saved this for last because we know that our, our equipment sometimes malfunctions when she's brought up. That's honestly so thoughtful of you. Yeah. Honestly, Eva was so not happy with me earlier when I said, <laughs> I said, guess what I have? And, I, and the name of the file is Peggy singing. Um, and I, what? you know what the dumbest thing I did was? You played it in the car or on the plane. You played it on the plane. I played it on the plane. You're so stupid. <laughs> I was like, oh, what's You're... this? I literally bought Wi-Fi and then like honestly, sat there extra bad. why did i do that but to be fair i had like my old in, in san jose by the way we are currently in san jose and <laughs> for those who know the birthplace of lemon which is why oh, wait, he's yeah, here i didn't even think of that this that's is why home. i brought him oh i get it <laughs> wow but no this is where this is where evil began for us as i like to say <laughs> this is a birthplace of evil but every time we're in san jose for Something some reason unsettling for happens. some reason a crisis happens it's and always Christine, a crisis Go right into crisis by listening to this on I a said, plane. I think okay. this is the time to, to bring her back into the picture. And I will say, I had those, um, my old headphones that have the, the lightning cable mm -hmm. and they're just like the normal in, you know, corded ones. And so I was like, I don't really hear anything. And then I went to the hotel room and I was like, oh, well, let me play this at max volume in a yeah. quiet room. And I was like, uh-oh, I hear it now. Oh, so I hope you can hear it with headphones. Okay. Um, let me play it for you. Tell me if it's too loud or too quiet. It might be too quiet. We'll see. Okay, here you go. Okay. Oh, you can even hear her say, did you hear that? No. <laughs> okay. No, that's that's for if sure. If I turn up the volume, it'd be way too loud. No, no, no. Okay. Yuck. That's what it sounds Want to cue it again? Yeah. Because I heard mama. I don't know what that song is, but that's horrible. I, just, I the, feel like I just the, summoned her. The, <gasps> I think I summoned If anyone summoned her, her it's me. Back. We're already scared. <laughs> um, and I, all the lights shut off. Yeah. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. No, and I will say too, I wanted to mention this because um, like I said, I couldn't really hear it through my earbuds. And as someone, you have listened to so many evps and like just blank audio listening for evps like you recommend just over ear headphones right for um, this well i i have like sensory issues with earbuds oh you do okay. so that's the only reason i've always stuck with them plus for a moment i thought i looked like real cool in like 80s with them so that helped my need for them i see is an um, aesthetic thing yeah but also in my brain they work better no they for do EVPs They're, because i feel like it's well like they work better for sound, sound in general i mean they work better for for most sound uh I feel like you could probably check for EVPs doing whatever, but I I notice a difference if I'm not using headphones. I gotta say, uh, if you want to really like listen for something like that and really, I mean, a noise canceling over ear headphone is definitely the I way like to go. Um, so yeah, so those are the EVPs I brought from from our listen from our lovely listeners. Well, now that you've brought up PTD, let's bring up oh, let's let's close out with our final what toy. Is it? Which let me describe it. Let me let me okay. describe the um, I umbrella. I legitimately don't know what you're about to pull out. You're gonna figure it out in like five seconds. Okay. Um, the umbrella category for these uh, for this piece of equipment is a either a word scanner or an ITC device. Oh, love this guy. With a, which is a, <laughs> uh, I think it's called instrumental transcommunication oh or something so itc device but it basically means it's a machine that talks back to you sometimes they're just simply called word talkers um <laughs> okay <laughs> and so there are a few out there um there's one called the polter script which is like the new and improved version apparently you can all use it in french um <laughs> oh, la la. there's the paranormal puck which is supposed to bluetooth to your phone it's kind of the connection is is weird when i've used it so i don't know if i recommend that one um and then there is the envoy um there's a whole bunch of different versions of it but the one that everyone knows especially in the paranormal community it is the hottest item you can own like amongst anything motion detectors ems anything like that there is nothing like the ovulus 3 <gasps> nothing like it and this is something the, did it happen during covid kahuna. or something yeah 
I, I think we mentioned it on the show too, but somehow I got my hands on one. They are, so, they are very rare. They're like a hot item. And if you are a ghost hunter that owns an Ovulus 3, you have like this renowned respect. Yeah. It's and, and the it's item. specifically a three because there is the a three. four, but there's actually now a six. Which oh, wow. Has, I just found out the Ovulus 6 has a setting called Mind Block. Oh, well, I don't know if we need that in our lives. <laughs> but there's something about the Ovulus 3. Just like how we only pay attention to the Spirit Box 7 and 11, mm -hmm. Ovulus 3. That's it's the way like, to go. It is the first edition base set Charizard of Pokemon cards, <laughs> It's if you the will. rarest. It's holographic. It is the <laughs> item. And we have one. And, and Zach... Bagans has one. Zach Bagans so has one. So I feel like we've, you know, we're we're reaching these heights. Um, we're just, I I just love this guy. The only thing we need in our kit these days is Zach Bagans. Oh my gosh. Um. Okay. So here he is. Wow. Ovulus three. I don't I don't know where we're zooming in. But it looks like uh I don't know how would you describe it. Just like another gadget. They, they literally, they all look like the same it gadget. Just looks like a brick. And by the way, since three D printing has become a huge thing, especially during COVID, when everyone needed to like learn a project to stay sane, and everyone learned three D printing, I think that's one of the reasons why all this ghost hunting equipment is coming out now. Because like ninety percent of ghost hunting equipment that gets sent to me is three D printed. Yeah, so they like so, kind of make it themselves. Yeah. So if you don't like a version of it, then they come out with a new one, a new one. So this is not three D printed, but these days it feels like everything is. Um, this is just a black box it's got two little meters on the top and it's got a screen and this is the thing that we talk about on the show all the time that sounds like microsoft scan uh, microsoft, microsoft sam. sam yes so um this is a like i said a word scanner or a word talker and basically what it does is it has a database of words in it it has a dictionary inside of it that i think probably uses some version of like binary code mm. um and this machine is able to uh i guess manipulate the environment and can hear words that we can't hear with the human ear and will through binary can be like oh those sounds equal this word that's in the database right so it almost translates exactly essentially what what is being heard, what, what we can't hear um into words and i've i've seen some ghost adventures episodes that genuinely frightened me with with i think the um the dorothea puente house mm -hmm. uh they used this the and cecil it, hotel it one genuinely was scared fucking horrifying. it scared me and uh, actually, I'm glad you mentioned that because one of the reasons that the Ovulus 3 is so much more um, in like high demand after. or sought out yeah. is because a few research teams have tested it and have uh, said that on average, 75% of the time they get an eerily accurate response to oh. whatever's happening. So there is that 25% where like maybe the word random. doesn't make sense. Yeah. Maybe they're saying something maybe that you don't know the context of. Maybe we need of. more vegetables and you just don't know why. Can you imagine if you go into a house and it just says vegetables and you're like, Okay. But then someone else knows the whole story about yeah, the vegetables. Yeah, they're like, oh, yeah, that's the guy. Yeah. So who knows? All I know is it does not have a, um, like, a random generator in it. So you don't have to worry about just picking words. It really will just stay silent We've for hours. We've used it, and, and it'll just be quiet. And then all of a sudden, it'll say, like, ten words in a row. And we're like, okay. Yeah. So Should we try it? Yeah. Okay. So this is a turning on. It, dictionary it mode. says and i used i had to warn everybody i was like it's about to turn on don't be alarmed once microsoft <laughs> sam starts screaming dictionary mode uh we can just see if anything pops up okay um if you wanted to ask a question you can but we can also just see if it wants to okay, do anything we can say if anybody's here uh could you could you say something so something that's important to you something that means something to you if all of a sudden it says Winchester Mystery House, I'd lose my yeah, I'm sure. stupid mind. Although then I'd be like, somebody programmed this thing. Yeah, I just sat here overnight <laughs> being like... Doo, 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 doo. You learned binary code to type it in. <laughs> <laughs> the non-binary learned binary. That's stupid. Wow, now that's a plot twist. <laughs> but yeah, like, so sometimes it won't do anything. But then there really are times where all of a sudden it'll just pop up. One time I used care... Mm, carriage house we're in the carriage, carriage house. house uh they um when, when my uncle died i turned this on just to see if anything happened and three times in a row it said uncle like, <gasps> like and i i had turned it on the day that he died but just like random things like that and then it won't say anything so yeah i don't know anyway is there anything you'd like to ask before we part ways um do, do you have any messages for us anybody in the vicinity Would you like to scream at Microsoft Sam? To By the way, this isn't an, EM, an EVP if you're listening to this and you're like, someone's talking. It's M whispering. Yeah, we can hear you in real time if you'd like to say anything. They're going to say, 
leave nothing yeah <laughs> that was the other thing even i've used this and it just kept saying leave and i was like well i don't really want to but i guess Did it also get the word murder at one point it or got something kill murder knife it, blood it got like extremely graphic which i thought was interesting because that's what happened to lauren and josh in the basement they said like hmm yeah it said like stab it, the and... second they made contact it started saying about which happened to us and i was like is this like a prank like i almost felt like it was just trying to like scare us you know yeah Oh yeah. Um, yeah. No, I know with with these. One of the so, Ovulus three is known to uh, for this dictionary mode where I'll just say a bunch of words, and I think it's got like somewhere like three thousand words mm -hmm. in its dictionary. But there are other ones out there. I said there was one called the Envoy. It literally has emojis built in, like <laughs> like crazy things where like it'll just all of a sudden be like angry face, and it's like, are you fucking? Is kidding? that for like a modern ghost? Like, a, how I does it know? I, so that the Envoy has a informed aha uh -huh. okay it's for an informed modern ghost right <laughs> <laughs> um but so the envoy has a bunch of settings where it has a dictionary mode it has a an alphabet so it can spell it out like a ouija Ooh, board that's cool it has yes or no it has numbers it has emojis like it has all these the things that it has emojis is amazing it's like a whole keyboard for yeah a ghost and then um now N now i don't know i don't know if anyone can make sense of this if, let us you know make make some uh make it a little more clear for us jim <clears throat> the name not the not the word the name jim i don't know jim so jim we gotta end this <laughs> sorry jim thank you for sorry, talking jim. to us <laughs> thank you for the attempt but i'm I, i'm getting i'm i'm losing you <laughs> i'm losing you jim we're I'm, going through we're, a, we're going through a tunnel <laughs> okay jim this is nice talking to you see you guy what does it say fucking said bye no it didn't <laughs> did it really <laughs> stop you turned okay, it bye. off bye you're right we bye. didn't even get to show it no, I, I, you're right. I, we didn't, I, I don't know. What's Emma always me. turns the equipment off the second it works. Just one of my pet peeves. Listen, I feel bad about it. It did too. say bye. I should have heard we bye. Heard that, I saw right? it on the screen. Bye. Ugh. Okay. Well, thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Bye, Jim. Was there a Jim that worked here? Okay. Well, I don't know. That's so, okay. Winchester Mystery House does not know about a Jim either. Thank you for the fear. Um, all right. Well, that was our uh, very quick sampling of yeah. the ovulus. Next time, maybe we'll throw out the envoy and see if we can get an emoji of Jim. <laughs> <laughs> see how he's feeling today. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, thank you for joining us on our 300th episode. It's such an honor. I know. It's, I can't believe we've been here for 300 years. 300, 300 years. <laughs> that was Jim. Sorry. That was talking through me. That's Jim. Uh, 300 episodes is a <laughs> long, long time. So that means in five more years, we'll be 600. Uh episodes that seems right I think. that seems right that seems right wow so much time so many memories uh i hope everyone enjoyed our As actual stay at the winchester we... oh, you keep talking i'm just okay singing you out you be my okay well oh, i can't sing now um <laughs> thank you everyone for coming to our <laughs> do you know any more words to it As our life. Okay. Well, you want me to keep going yeah. i can uh, thank you so much, everyone who came. I will say before, uh, I, if I gave you one more piece of advice, it's that if you ever use any of this equipment, including us with the ovulus, make sure you say goodbye. <laughs> make sure you say goodbye. Close out your space. Don't let anything come home with you. Set your boundaries. Uh, except I can never set a boundary with Christine, which is why she sings like that as I talk. But Thank you, everyone. 300 episodes. I can't believe some of you have been here this entire time. Some of you are new. We appreciate you so we much. We always do. And uh, as as Jim would say, bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm tired. <laughs>